What's good, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Community Voices. Thank you all for tuning in. Um, I'm somebody who, honestly, I'm, I'm really big in manifestation and having a lot of power in words. So I'm actually going to go ahead and say this. I believe that this gentleman here that we have with us today is a young legend in the making. He's already, to me, a young Iowa legend in the making. He's a first-round NBA first draft pick, fourth overall pick to be exact, to the Sacramento Kings, and he's also the MVP of the Summer League. Keegan Murray, welcome to Community Voices, man. How are you doing? Doing great. Can't complain. Appreciate you for having me on here. Of course, man. I appreciate you cutting out time. I know, you know, even though you're a rookie, I know you're still busy and moving, so I appreciate you making time for us. (laughs) For sure. No problem. No problem. So I want I want to start here. So I want you, I know everybody's like, oh, you got drafted. How does it feel? You know, how does it feel being up on the stage, shaking people's hands? You know, I know that question probably comes around a thousand times, but really what I want to know is I want you to kind of take me to the morning after when you woke up that morning um, and you really woke up as, you know, you had your, started your first day as an NBA player, you know, being a Sacramento King. What did it feel like waking up to be an NBA player and like, that adjustment of your mindset and having it all kind of set in, take me to that that morning when you woke up after being drafted. Yeah, yeah. So to start draft night is an extremely long, long day, long night, um, because you're all the way in Brooklyn and you got to go all the way back to Manhattan. So, um, yeah, it's a a stretch. But no, uh, that the next day was it was crazy um, because Sacramento is all the way across the country. um, So it was a five and five hour, 45 minute flight uh, the next day, right in the morning. So. I mean, during that plane ride, you kind of, I'm there with my family um, on it. And that's when I kind of processed everything because it's pretty quiet and um, just have time to think to yourself. And that's kind of that moment where um, I was like, I'm in the NBA and everything that just happened yesterday is crazy. So that's crazy. Yeah. You got, that's crazy to think like you have that high, but you're also like at the same time you're having that high, but you're probably like exhausted because that is just. Yeah. And you got to talk about the time delay too, how you went from like being behind to now you're super ahead. Like that's yeah, it's yeah. probably it's really taxing, I'm sure. That's yeah, crazy. It's crazy. It really is. Now I know we're talking about, you know, from east to west coast, all kind of, or yeah, east to west coast. I went this way. I meant to go. <laughs> you know I mean, but um, you know, we talk about east to west coast. You know, you're originally from Iowa. I believe you're from Cedar Rapids to be exact, correct? Yeah, correct. So I want you to kind of take me, you know, I know Cedar Rapids and I was, I want to say it's a smaller town, you know what I'm saying? Um, I'm from Texas originally, Corpus Christi, but it's a really small town. Yeah. And I know sometimes being from a small town, it kind of shapes you, it kind of gives you, uh, it kind of helps break some, develop your character a little bit. Can you kind of tell me how, you know, being from Iowa and how being, you know, from Cedar Rapids in general um, helped shape your character, you know, growing up and as you got older? Yeah, I just think it kind of gave me a humble mindset. Um, I mean, if you haven't been to Iowa, it's kind of, it's pretty laid back. Um, everyone there is good people. Um, there's good people around you. So I was at a place, um, like in high school, um, and growing up where I was able to, uh, be comfortable in my situation, um, be comfortable, hang out with people. Um, I always had a small group of friends, um, especially in Iowa. And, um, I feel like just the people there kind of shaped me to be a really good person. Um, because there's a, like, there's a term that's called, uh, being Iowa nice. I mean, that's just kind of what you get from people in Iowa. So for me, uh, whenever I'm not in those uh, on the basketball court, I try and be the best person I can be off the court. So I feel like that's shaped me um, in a positive way. I love it. I love it. I can definitely see that, man. And, you know, another thing, I know we're talking about Iowa. I want to speak to that a little bit more because, you know, one thing about you is having big dreams in, in a market that way, you know, it's a smaller market. It doesn't get, you know, that much attention, like, uh, you know, you kind of feel like you have to to work harder to get the proper recognition for the talent that you have. You know, I mean, a lot of people are looking at these key markets, Texas, like Texas, California, New York, all those kind of things. But you know, being from that kind of place, you have to kind of prove yourself more. And I feel like that's something that's been like the theme of your life, always having to prove yourself, kind of you know, having to have that chip on your shoulder. You know, yeah. I think you had to prove yourself in high school, and you did you were averaging like 20, 20 plus points per game. You're going crazy in high school, and then you yeah. know, seeing some of the people around you get the scholarships, and for some reason, you know. The scholarship didn't come the same. You know, you know, you also deserve that same recognition, that same opportunity. You know, and certain ones didn't pan out, but then when that didn't pan out, you continue to work hard, continue to prove yourself. And you know, Iowa, the Iowa scholarship comes along, and now you know, you know, you work hard doing that, and then you got to prove yourself again to be drafted. You know what I mean? So, kind of always having that chip on your shoulder mentality and all those kind of things. Can you kind of tell me like what has it been like? 
live in your life to have to always walk around with that chip on your shoulder or like constantly feel like you have to make an impact with everything you do? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, in high school, um, I had college coaches. I know I had a couple of division one coaches that were like, you're not ready for college basketball and stuff like that. And, uh, when I got to Iowa, um, I remember the first, uh, like media member I got sent me like a, like a DM on like Twitter or something. And it was like, um, are you going to be a walk on or a scholarship player? And that kind of just, I don't know, just kind of ate at me a little bit. Um, hey, that's crazy. Just, what? Just trying to show that I had to prove myself, um, in that way. And then, um, I mean, even when I got drafted, like people thought I did, I shouldn't have been in this position. So, um, I mean, I just keep that mindset of if I work hard, good things will happen to me. So, um, I just keep working hard and I just try to block out everything that people have to say about me. And, you know, I love that too. Cause you know, when you, when you, how can I explain this? Yeah. When I was kind of seeing your story and reading your story, I was thinking to myself, you know, moving that way. And like you said, blocking out the noise and staying focused. But yeah. at the same time, you know, like you said, that guy DM'd you about you're going to be a walk on or, you know, whatever. And that kind of ate at you. Like, there are going to be times where, like, you having to prove yourself for people constantly doubting you and you know how good you are. It's going to kind of eat at you and you have to, like, realign yeah. yourself. I would love to, for you to kind of tell me, uh, let me know, like, how does it feel um, to understand the balance of, you know, knowing when you need to prove yourself and then understanding when, like, you know, you got to kind of re realign and focus so that you don't burn yourself out mentally or physically. I guess I'm more so saying, understanding the difference when it's time to like prove yourself and then when it's time to like just progress like this got to be better stay focused and just keep going yeah. yeah I think that just comes with taking it day by day I mm -hmm. mean just not looking at the future um like um you play you play a back-to-back -back where you're looking forward more to uh the game before that you're about to play or the game after you're about to play and I just think it's taking it day by day I'm not on that those could be days where you're not your best. Um, but those could be days where you're feeling your best. And those are the days where you got to progress. And um, just being able to prove myself um, in each aspect of the game and, and in each aspect of life, I think just there's different variables to that, but it always comes down to just taking it day by day and um, not taking any day for granted. 100%. Yeah, that was perfect. You definitely have to take it every day is different. So you definitely have to take it day by day and just realign mentally physically and just kind of you know make sure you're knowing what you're focused on for that day so I, I, I definitely can see that's really important now you know we're talking about the work that you you're getting ready to do on the court and the impact and you know that kind of how you move and your mindset but you know one thing aside from mindset too is that you know you also love you know having an impact on your community especially where you're from and so you know with us being community voices making sure that we take our time to do the work we're going to be donating 10k to the LBA Foundation in Iowa. And then we're yeah. also be donating another 10K to um, the Bill Black Foundation as well, I think in conjunction with Sierra Health. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for people who don't know, I'm gonna go ahead and fill them in real quick. LBA Foundation's mission is to inspire hope in the future leaders, believers, and achievers within the community yeah. of Iowa. Um, I would love to know, you know, how important is it for you to give back to your community and have an impact back home? Um, and at the same time, have a, an impact on the new community that's welcoming you in Sacramento. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was one of the main things um, I wanted to do when I became a professional. Um, I've been a part of the LBA foundation ever since I was a kid. Uh, my dad uh, helped start it, helped start running it up, but also along with Alabama, who's a good friend, of, a good friend of my dad's. And um, they're just, their main mission is to help people in the Steer Rapids community. Um, it's not the, um, but especially um, in the city, it's not the best parts of the city. Um, it's really just trying to get kids the necessary school supplies, um, get them out um, in clinics, camps, um, just kind of get them out um, of their of their natural state um, where they're at. And I just think that's something that I've witnessed firsthand and uh, it's something that I really just want to give back. Because I know that especially in Sierra Rapids, there's not many professionals that have came out of there. And um, I, I kind of want to be the ones that just uh, gives back to them and then um, just in California also I mean that's my new home now um, so um, when I first got to when I first got to Sacramento um, right after the draft um, I went to uh, the Kings and Queens uh, basketball basketball event um, the next day um, and that kind of just opened my eyes to um, the talent that's in that's in Sacramento and also the the quality of kids um, that they have in Sacramento the quality of people they have in Sacramento um, and it's all about giving back and it's all about putting kids on a platform uh, where they can succeed, um, put their families on a platform where they can succeed. And um, that's something that really inspired me uh, to also 
just to help them my rookie season eventually in the future. I love it, man. You know, I know I said it earlier, you know, you being a young legend, but, you know, part I think part of being a legend is also, you know, what did you do off the court? Like, what is that legacy you left? You know what I mean? So I, I love to see, you know, you had that passion so early and you making sure that you had that impact early. So that's, that's super awesome. And I know sure. we're kind of getting ready to wrap things up here soon. So I want to ask you a couple more things. Um, earlier you mentioned, or just a couple minutes ago, you mentioned your dad, right? You know, we talk about giving back to the community and, you know, making sure that they feel valued and that you show them that you believe um, in them. And, you know, you're showing them there are opportunities available for them to succeed, um, letting them know you believe in their future. Your dad has been someone who has always believed in you and has always seen your talent when everyone else, you know, was behind. You know, he always kind of saw that within you from an early age. Can you speak to the importance of, you know, your father and the impact he had in your life and the confidence that he instilled in you, um, you know, always believing in you and letting you know that you can be what you want to be? Yeah, yeah. My dad, um, growing up, he's been my only basketball trainer um, and he's kind of, he's a, he did really well. Um, when I was growing up, but just kind of dividing father and coach. Um, and I thought that was key because um, you don't really get that uh, a lot of times. Um, when you're a coach, coaching your kids, you kind of take that back home and things like that. And uh, he was really good at not, not doing that. Um, and I think that his confidence in me uh, went and even uh, goes today. I mean, I remember in high school, um, he always told me that me and my brother, um, that we're the best players and we're, we'll eventually, uh, we'll eventually uh, become really good. He knew that um, we obviously had to grow in our bias a little bit and stuff like that, but he knew that uh, your skill set will take you places. And um, that's something that he always harped on. And uh, I'm just grateful for that because he's been in my corner throughout the way. Um, he's never let, uh, lost confidence in, in me or my brother. And uh, I think a big thing is especially my senior year, um, when I was uh, not getting the scholarships that I was looking for and things like that, um, he was my biggest supporter um, and just trying to find ways, um, different things that uh, I that could help me succeed. Um, he was a big proponent of me going to uh, the post-grad route. Um, so uh, I feel like I owe all my success uh, to him because uh, he's been um, my biggest supporter through it all. I love that, man. Yeah, y'all's y'all, y'all story and y'all's, you know, relationship – from son to father to, you know, coach and athlete has been just so in in interesting. So that's definitely like, just shows the importance of having somebody in your corner, you know, no matter all the noise that's going around. So I, I, I love that story and big shout outs to your dad, for sure, for sure. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> now, I have to ask one last question or, and this question might, you know, I, I'm sure this might be a question you've heard too, but I have to ask it because people are going to want to know, you know, they saw you ball out in the summer league, you know what I mean? So I guess now the only question left is, you know, what can we expect from you, you know, in your first season of the Sacramento King, what can we expect from you? And what do you expect from yourself most importantly? Yeah. Uh, I think the biggest thing um, that I expect from myself um, is to win. I think that's the biggest thing that I'm looking forward to this season is just to win. I know in Sacramento, um, it hasn't gone their way these uh, this last couple of years. And that's one of the biggest things. That's the reason why I wanted to come here to Sacramento is to win. Um, but there you get uh, a person that's just hungry, hungry um, as hell just to be great. Um, and I think that's the that's the biggest thing for me. Um, and I know uh, if I be great, um, do my work, do the extra work, um, good uh, things will come, individual accolades will come. Um, so I'm just looking forward, looking forward to the season. I love it, man, because, you know, I think about it all the time. Sacramento is a, a team that, you know, damn near is the perfect, like, you know, next chapter to your story. You've been proving yourself all your life, and this team is somebody, especially in the state of California, who's has something to prove. All these, you know, players just hungry to make sure that, you know, we talk about L.A., we talk about Los Angeles, the Clippers, the Warriors, all stuff, but, like, Sacramento is is here and ready to, you know, make some noise. So I just, yeah. I just love that that story and the fit that you have there. And I'm looking forward to it, man. I'm excited to see you ball out this season, too. Yeah, for sure. I'm excited. I know the fans are excited too. Um, just being in Sacramento for a little bit, the fans, they, they want to win. So it's, it'll be fun. Awesome. Dope, man. Well, look, again, I appreciate your time. Thank you again for joining us for another episode of Community Voices. Ready for basketball season. Excited to see you and everybody yeah. else. Take care. Enjoy. Have a good day.